Hey, this is Chris again from Florida Music, and we're in front of East West Quantum Leap Gypsy. This is the new one produced by Nick Phoenix, and it's all about gypsy-style musical instruments. This is their new uh, Play engine, uh, which is their new 64-bit engine they've developed. And it comes in um, audio units, VST, and Mac and PC compatibilities. So we've really got something uh, new and uh, good from those guys. So I'm just going to go through a few of the uh, special features that are found in this product uh, on opening. Um, there are a lot more instruments than I can possibly go through on this demo, so I've just picked a few here that we can kind of uh, work on and, and get listen to what the new technology is all about. So as you see it here now, it's a standalone mode, and I'm actually connecting this with my uh, computer, kind of my keyboard rather, my musical keyboard. It's connected via um, a USB into the computer, and then I'm playing it from that. So let's get started. So you can see the layout's kind of fairly easy to understand here. Um, we've got the, a nice gray area down here, which gives us a lot more information than most of the players that we've seen in this type. You've got the normal MIDI channel, the CPU usage is all there in, in real time. The ports that you want to go out and the in and outs and stuff like that. But this is a new one, articulations. If you've ever used one of these type of engines where you have to change the articulations uh, fairly often, you get a bit bored with trying to read through the book and find out where they are. Well, they've given you a nice kind of like cheat sheet um, you can read on here, and it says things like sustain RRC0. Well, that's obviously to these little blue uh, areas down here, which are called the key switches. So if I wanted uh, a sustain round robbing type effect, I would put Z C0 down. And if I wanted a tremolo um, type sound, a tremulating sound, I would actually connect to D0, the next one to it. So that's how you would uh, kind of connect and switch to these things. Obviously, a lot of this done automatically, so you don't really have to do too much to uh, get it going anyway. So let's try this first one. We're looking at the uh, Flamenco Lead Master. So that's an acoustic guitar for flamenco style playing and such like. Um, the round robin thing, let's just go put a point on that because it's uh, pretty sweet. What happens is the first note you play is one sample, the second note is another sample, but it's at the same velocity. So there's actually two uh, recordings for each key velocity of the first and second notes. And that stops the machine gun effect uh, when you play in multiple notes very fast after each other. So if I just play a piece here, I'll try and work it out on my keyboard here. So really what you can hear, it sounds very realistic when you're playing it in a real-time mode there, which is what, is what I was doing there. Um, and you can hear that the, uh, there's not really too much of the double horrible triggering that goes on with these things. Uh, the reverb is really nice because they're using a convulsive ping of a real studio. And over here on the reverb section, you can see the different ones they have. And I'm guessing that the EW is to do with their new East-West Studios that they've purchased in L.A., and there's one there that says Dark Abbey, and I think that's probably because I've got some other packages uh, pulled in here with the same sort of things. I'm not sure whether that one ships with it, but there's an awful lot of uh, choices here of different ones you can use, uh, different Hollywood halls and so on. But I'm using the preset one that came with it. Uh, you can change the filtering if you want to, create tones of your own, the enveloping, automatic double tracking, uh, delay systems. And I'm just using it as standard from the factory because it seems to work that way very nicely. But if you wanted to tweak, it's all there for you. So let's move on to another sound and uh, go on to some other technology that they're using. I'm um, just moving this over. We'll get this uh, vi violin legato going. Now, on the violin side, the problem normally is that when you're bowing a violin um, or recording a violin for sampling, you just tend to take the first bow. And the problem with that is that isn't really what happens, because uh, every single note you play from then on is going to have the first initial bowing, which is wrong. They usually play long strokes on the bow and then move the fingers for the legato passages. Now, normally on some sample engines, you have to kind of switch those with key switches, which was what those blue areas were I showed you before. Um, here, it's actually got a, a technique of actually detecting the way you play. So let's show you that in real time. So I'll play these first few notes. Now I was playing a kind of uh, staccato type method there, and you can hear that it was just bowing every single note was a, a, an actual bow strike. Now if I play and I kind of um, leave the notes to roll into each other, it does things like this. So you can hear that it did a nice glide to the first note to the second note and so on, with which would really be the left hand of the violin player. And that gave it an enormous, uh, great expression change that I all I did was just played slightly different. I didn't switch anything or move any levers. So let's try that again. Here's the straight. And here's me playing legato. Now, 
Now, we noticed something else happened there is that when it came to the normal end of the bow, normally um, these no sample engines, they just continue the sound, which is very unrealistic. This one actually has a bow direction change, so you can hear that. I'll play this note again. <laughs> So you hear the bow actually get to the end of the uh, extension of the bow and he has to change direction to go the other way. Great feature, sounds awful, awfully good in any mix I've done so far. So that's just things that they, they've changed now. That's called legato detection. So let's just move on then. We'll just switch this one off the keyboard and go on to something else that they've put on here. Um, they've done some things um, in the uh, key switching just to help uh, you do things that you couldn't normally do. Um, I don't know if I switched that violin off. I'll just check that. Yes, I did. Okay, so we'll go back to the other instruments. You can load, um, as you can see here, uh, I've got many loaded in one player, so you don't have to have multiple instances, you just basically flick between the different types you want, and then, then all the panel changes to, to update which one you've got. So they had something here that was interesting, um, we didn't touch on very much, but the, the key switching. So here's, um, say if I was playing something fast, uh, really fast, and probably too fast for the guitar, but um, so like... <laughs> What I'm doing is there, I'm double keying the notes to kind of create that kind of repeating note thing they do in the Spanish style. But the trouble is that's kind of difficult to do. So they've actually given you um, a switch here on the um, D0. That actually does that for you. So here's me playing the two notes. And if I put the switch down, you can hear the repeating stuff happening in the background. Great feature because it saves a lot of finger work when you're trying to work on some difficult uh, guitar pieces. So let's just move on a couple of other things we've got here. Um, this is interesting. They've done an, uh, you know, a dulcimer. I guess this is a dulcimer. It sounds like a dulcimer, but I don't really recognize what the name is. Symbolon. I think that's how it's pronounced there. But it's, uh, it's a def definitely a dulcimer sound. So they've got that. Now, there's another problem there. So if you wanted to do that kind of Italian, Spanish-y type thing where you've got that kind of double repeating, it would be difficult to do. So again, they've given you that. You just uh, press a switch, and you can see it says um, tremolo is D0. So that's this key here. So if I press my key switch on my keyboard, now I get repeating. So it's very easy to create uh, sounds and everything you want um, in this whole library here. And in fact, there's, as I say, there's lots of other things. There's trombones, there's accordions, and so on in this. All to do with that gypsy genre, but really you can play these on anything you want. So that kind of gives you a quick uh, coverage of what the uh, Gypsy is about. There obviously are several more in the packages they have. They have a Fab Four and a Ministry of Rock and so on. So we'll cover those later. But anyway, this is Chris from Florida Music, and I uh, hope you catch